Hi there, I'm Daniel Seberg with Google Developers Live here at I.O. 2013. And I am joined right now by Peter Hazelhurst and Nick Sate from the Google Wallet team. Hi. Um, before we get into some of the announcements that are happening here at the show, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about what you do, first of all. I know that you, uh, you know, have different roles in some ways, but you work together. So tell me, first of all, Peter, what you do. Sure, so I run the product side for Google Wallet. So my team's job is to build all the great apps, things like NFC wallet on your phone, and the new thing we just launched, Pay by Gmail. Okay, great. In my role, I'm part of the engineering organization. I uh, try to keep uh, Peter and his team honest in some ways, uh, <laughs> mostly focused on the merchant and developer side of, uh, of the capabilities that we build. Okay, great. Well, let's, so let's dive right into some of the announcements. What is new with, with Google Wallet, and what in particular was announced here at the show? So at the show today uh, and yesterday, we announced three new things. Um, first of all, we announced our Instant Buy SDK for Android. And that allows developers to make easy checkout uh, options for their apps for things like physical goods and services. And uh, the second thing we launched was also our new uh, Wallet Objects APIs. So the ability to add things to the Google Wallet, uh, like boarding passes, tickets, loyalty cards, offers, things like that. And then the third thing we announced, uh, which was really exciting, was our ability to attach money in Gmail. Right, now we're going to get into some of those a little bit more, but tell me, are you thinking about expanding Google Wallet into a platform, in a sense, beyond just what it is right now? Yeah, so what we're really shooting for is to try and broaden Google Wallet so that it's no longer just tied to something that you do on your phone. It works across everywhere at Google. So whether you're buying a subscription on YouTube or paying for your new uh, Google Music, uh, Google Play, Play Music, yep. all, all, all Access Pass. Yep. All of those things are powered by the wallet. So one time you add your credit card or your bank account to Google, and you can use it everywhere. So that's the whole focus of everything we're doing. And how much of a challenge is that to, to kind of integrate all of those different services and devices together? I mean, this is obviously something you guys think about a lot. It's been, it's been a really interesting challenge because we've had a lot of different teams at Google with their different uh, go-to-market strategies and different ways of wanting to charge people's cards and stuff like that. Plus, we also wanted to make sure it works on all sorts of devices and that's been a real growth opportunity for us. All right, Nick, tell us about uh, Google Wallet Instant Buy. Um, what is that all about? I mean, I think the name obviously suggests what it does, but you know, talk to me about some of the partners that are launching as, as, as a part of that. Sure. Um, so what we, uh, what we saw was that uh, the Play Store does a great job of allowing uh, application developers on Android to monetize in-app digital content. But there really wasn't a good solution for merchants that were actually selling physical goods on, uh, on Android apps and, and uh, other capabilities. Um, increasingly, we've seen this is not just online merchants with an app, but even people like Uber, one of our launch partners, where you complete the transaction and pay for it on your phone, even though the goods and services are actually delivered in the physical world. So we're seeing a lot of those sorts of crossover use cases. And those are the merchants that we believe can really benefit from Instant Buy. Uh, from a merchant standpoint, one of the biggest problems with conversion in mobile checkout um, has been abandonment rates, uh, where there's just too many clicks, too many keystrokes that you have to enter. It's a pain in the ass. Oops. Uh, and I think that it, uh, it's one of those things that, that all of us need to, uh, would love to see happen better. And we've created a capability combined with G Plus sign-in uh, the ability to have much, much fewer clicks, and we hope that we'll reduce the abandonment rate from, I think it's around 97%, uh, according to one survey that we recently saw, uh, down to something where it's as little as a couple of clicks and you're, and you're right through a checkout process very easily. You mentioned Uber, and I know a lot of folks um, you know, in, in the Bay Area rely on it, even in New York. I know that there's you know, people all over the country and the world, frankly, thinking about how that ties into their, their getting around needs. And, and what I've noticed, I mean, it's almost a no-click situation. I mean, you're, it's right. so seamless right. when you make that payment, you right. forget that you're making the payment, which I think is, is, is great. I mean, right. it, it removes that kind of friction or barrier, and, and I guess that's a great example of that. Are there other partners you can, you can point to? Sure, yeah, I, I didn't want to leave anyone out, yeah, so sure. I actually wrote them down. Yep. Uh, but we had 11 partners that have already integrated. The apps are available on, uh, on the Play Store to download and, and use integrated with Google Wallet. Uh, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, The Fancy, uh, GoPayGo, TagStand, Uber, TabdOut, Wrap, Priceline, and Rulala. So those are the 11, uh, 11 partners that, that launched with us yesterday. Um, 
a lot of them actually are in this kind of crossover space where you're making a reservation online uh, or on your mobile device, but you're actually staying in a hotel and, or, or renting a car or whatever it happens to be in, in the physical world. Uh, from a merchant standpoint, what they've told us was that this integration is really easy. It doesn't, they don't pay any new fees to us. The, the capability we provide is a value added service with, without charging them. They still continue to process their credit card transactions the same way that they would. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to show that, uh, that conversion uplift which some of our, uh, our case studies have already shown uh, is happening. So uh, Peter, let's move on to Attach Money in Gmail, yeah, sure. uh, which was announced yesterday. Before we came on the air here, you, you mentioned what somebody had said about it as an announcement. What did they say in terms of the announcement? Yeah, well, we, we got some great feedback. It was one of the quotes we got was, it's the craziest new thing we've heard at Google I.O. all day. Yeah. So that was really exciting. And I think what we did, which was kind of fun, is rather than just blast out a new feature to everybody, we've launched it virally. And the way it works is the only way you get the feature is if someone sends you money. Ah, and so okay. to jumpstart the ecosystem, we have all the Googlers in the US. And then yesterday, I sent 10 bucks to everyone that was at I.O. with a US account. And so if you uh, have a friend and you want access to it, find someone who's been at I.O. and it's just going to grow like this virally until we get really, really comfortable, and then we'll make it available to everybody. Which is kind of how Gmail got it started in a way, too. I mean, yeah, we're they had an invite model, and, yeah, five yeah. users, that sort of thing. So talk, walk me through, I mean, earlier we agreed that you were going to send me $1,000, as I recall. Uh, that's right. Just to demonstrate this, it hasn't happened yet, so I don't know if there's sort of a delay or... Actually, interestingly enough, you picked $1,000. We have a, a whole bunch of really cool security that's uh, designed to protect uh, consumers' accounts, and one of the things we look for is really out of the ordinary things, and it would have known that I shouldn't have sent you a thousand dollars. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, and it, it, it's probably just being blocked. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. It's being held up in some way. Yeah. Um, but um, and just walk me through yeah, how so it works. Yeah, so let me tell you how it works. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's deceptively simple. In Gmail, we have the new Compose bar, and you know down the bottom where there's attachments, and yep. you can attach a photo or a document, or you know link something from G Drive, that sort of thing. Yeah. You can, if you've got access to the, the product, you'll just see a little dollar sign. Click on dollars, pops up, says, okay, would you like to send 10 bucks, $100, whatever you want. As long as you have a Google wallet, it'll either uh, show you if you have a balance, because you may have already received some money before. And once you add your name, you'll see a nice, beautiful G plus thing, so you can make sure you're really sending it to the person you expect to. Mm. And then you hit send, and it's done. Five seconds later, you're gonna receive the email, and it's gonna say, great, here's 10 bucks from Peter. If you don't have a Google wallet yet, or um, if you're on Hotmail or AOL or something like that. There's a call to action to go to Google and get a Google Wallet, and then the money will be deposited. And so there's a little bit of a process for the first time, and then after that it's all instantaneous. So if I send it to you, you get it in one second. I see, so it's not tied to somebody opening the attachment or reading the email or anything like that, it's just as soon as you send it, it's there. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Who, who do you think is gonna really capitalize on using this? I mean. Sending money to, to each other or friends or something is, is one, one idea, but you know, from, a, from a business standpoint, where do you think this is going to lead? So in the short term, we've focused on consumer side. Um, we've had a lot of small businesses and big businesses say, hey, can we start putting merchant stuff through this? And we're like, hang on guys, let's focus on the consumer. Um, and you know, so our, our sort of scenarios that we see a lot of is people saying, hey, um, you know, we, we went out to dinner last night, can you send your share? Or I'm renting an apartment in the city for the holidays, you guys want to chip in? And all you have to do is reply, yeah, here's my 50 bucks. And there's like, it's frictionless. It's just built into that social engagement that the Gmail is really working well on. That's fantastic, that's really cool. And um, you can obviously imagine us sticking it in other parts of Google services where there's a lot more of those interactions. And so we're, we're gonna work on that over the rest of the year. It seems like a ton of potential for something like this. Yeah. Um, now, Nick, I, I want to get into the types of things that you can store in Wallet because, um, you know, tell me about all of the things, I guess, that you can store in Wallet, which it leads me to the question of what can you store in Wallet? Sure. Um, so when we designed the Wallet Objects API, our intention was to create a very flexible data model that basically allows developers' imaginations to dictate what gets stored in, uh, in the Wallet. Um, so the basic platform is one that provides just name value pairs with some templating capabilities so you can define how you want these things to look um, and, and be stored in the wallet. We went one step further than that for two areas. Uh, the first being loyalty, which in many cases, uh, or memberships in general, um, they are a key engagement vehicle for merchants to engage with their consumers. 
Um, and it, the, the current process is very broken. We all have you know, tons of loyalty memberships and we don't really use them um, because we don't carry around a stack of cards like that, uh, other than Peter and I who actually have a second wallet that has all of our, uh, our loyalty memberships and that's what I want to get rid of. Um, and we've gone to, uh, the, the, the additional things that we focused on in loyalty is adding some semantic definition to that object. Um, and some additional capabilities like leveraging your, uh, the, the data that we already have about a consumer in, uh, in their account, in their wallet, uh, to do instant sign up so a merchant can uh, actually have their program discovered. I can walk into the Marriott down the road, which is where we're staying. Um, uh, we will, based on location and timeliness, surface that as, you know, hey, maybe you should sign up for Marriott. If you already, uh, if you already have one, we'll show you the card that, that you have. Uh, if you don't have one, we'll surface it. Uh, surface it saying, "Hey, sign up today," and Marriott could offer them a hundred, you know, a thousand point bonus to sign up instantaneously. It's one click, you're done. Um, and merchants get much, much better data because, in most cases, wallet accounts have gone through some know your customer uh, validation. So we have verified data about a customer. There's, there's no more, you know, Elvis Presley and Mickey Mouse uh, ending up in people's uh, in people's systems. And the second area that we've done more with is offers, uh, where again we've added semantic definition. So like one of the fields that we have is an expiration date for an offer, and the system automatically recognizes that and, and does alerts and, and notifications to consumers saying, hey, you have a coupon that's about to expire. Um, we expect it to take those, those two types and extend them into other verticals, um, mostly driven by uh, you know, the developer community and what they tell us is important. Um, but we'll focus mostly on, uh, on commercial objects. We already have a partner, uh, BillGuard, that's doing something very interesting with the more generic uh, capabilities that, that the platform provides, um, where they have a back-end fraud detection system. You register your credit cards with them, um, and they send you alerts and actually transaction records, and, and it's actually a very beautiful interactive experience. Uh, right there in your wallet. Hmm. That's great. And, and offers also showing up in, in the Maps experience too? Right. I mean, as people are right. searching for pizza or coffee, or they, they, yeah. they yeah. get that increasingly suggested to them as yeah. part of the new... That's right. Yeah. So one of the core things we're focused on in the wallet is pretty much allowing, make it possible for all those things you would normally carry with you, but some, either you forget or you just say, you know what, it's not worth it to carry that gift card, I'm never going to use it again. Yeah. We let you bring that into the digital cloud with Google and then we'll surface it to you on your phone or on the web or in maps at the right place and at the right time. Mm. So you never forget that thing that you had that's going to create value for you. And, and it's this continuous experience. And what Nick was talking about is we're starting off with some really obvious things like loyalty cards and offers. And then as the developer community grows, we're going to pick off those key categories and make them more first class things in the wallet. Tickets is a really obvious one. We've got a lot of interest from um, movie theaters and stuff like that, that they want to be able to have the ticket so that when you buy it through Instant Buy online, you can also then just have the uh, barcode on your phone. We'll geofence you as you come into the movie theater, scan your barcode, keep going. You don't talk to anyone, you don't need to do credit cards, it's all just magic. That's awesome. All right, well, so we're running out of time here, but sure. if people want to learn more about all of this, whether from the merchant side or the consumer side, where can they go? So I think uh, our website's up and running and it's developers.google.com slash commerce. Okay. Great. Guys, well, Peter and Nick, thank you both so much for, for joining us. This is some great information. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, really We're really it. excited and looking forward to seeing how things run. Don't forget that $1,000. <laughs> $1,000, <laughs> I'm on it. I can, I'll give you my Gmail later. Okay, we'll talk. great. Right. Thanks very much. All right. Thank Thanks, guys. That's going to do it for now here at Google Developers Live. Stay tuned for lots more content right here.